In this video, I'm going to break down a topic that seems very complicated, but is actually fairly simple. Mitochondrial dysfunction. If you ever felt sluggish, foggy, or just overall low in energy, it could have something to do with your mitochondria. So those tiny powerhouses inside your cells. Let's use this video to discuss what the mitochondria are, how they work, what happens when they don't work well, which is when you run into mitochondrial dysfunction, and most importantly, how you can fix it. Okay, so what exactly are mitochondria? Think of them as the batteries of your cells. Almost every cell in your body has these tiny structures inside of them, and their main job is to produce energy. If your cells are a city, mitochondria are like the power plants, making sure everything stays up and running. Without mitochondria, your cells wouldn't be able to function properly, and your biochemistry would basically break down. The energy they produce isn't just any kind of energy, though. It's a specific form called ATP, adenosine triphosphate. ATP is basically the energy currency of your cells. Anytime your body needs to do something, like flex a muscle or digest food, or even just thinking, it needs ATP to make that happen. So without mitochondria, you wouldn't be able to do anything that requires energy. That's why the mitochondria are so important, but unfortunately they're often overlooked when it comes to overall health and energy levels. To understand what mitochondrial dysfunction is, we first need to look at the biochemical pathway behind how ATP is made. The following might be a little technical, but bear with me. I'll try to summarize everything in simple words later on. So the whole process happens through something called cellular respiration, or more specifically, oxidative phosphorylation. Don't worry, that sounds complicated, but it's really just a fancy way of saying burning fuel to create energy. The mitochondria take in nutrients from the food you eat, mostly glucose and fats, and then they break those down in a series of chemical reactions. This starts with glycolysis, which happens outside the mitochondria in the cytoplasm, so a different part of the cell. The byproducts of that process then enter the mitochondria, where they go through something called the citric acid cycle, which is also known as the Krebs cycle. This cycle produces molecules like NADH and FADH2, which are then used in the electron transport chain. This is where the magic happens. In the electron transport chain, electrons are passed along a series of protein complexes in the inner mitochondrial membrane. As these electrons move down the chain, protons, which are really just positively charged particles, get pumped across the membrane and then create an electrochemical gradient. It works similar to a battery or, for example, how water that is stored behind a dam holds energy that can be released to generate electricity. Finally, the energy that is stored in this battery is used to create ATP by adding a phosphate group to ADP, adenosine diphosphate. Then you have ATP and then you have energy. To summarize this in simpler words, the citric acid cycle inside the mitochondria makes special molecules like NADH and FADH2 that can carry energy. These molecules help move protons to build up energy which is then used to make ATP. Okay, now that you know how mitochondria work, let's talk about what happens when they don't work like they're supposed to. This is what we call mitochondrial dysfunction. Basically, mitochondrial dysfunction happens when your mitochondria cannot produce enough ATP to meet your body's energy demands. Obviously, when your cells don't have enough energy, they can't perform their normal functions. This goes without saying. And this can lead to a wide range of symptoms, like chronic fatigue, muscle weakness, brain fog, and even more serious conditions like neurodegenerative diseases like Alzheimer's or Parkinson's. So this is a big deal. When mitochondria become dysfunctional, they can also start leaking some harmful molecules like free radicals. Free radicals are highly reactive and they can damage other parts of the cell, including the mitochondria themselves. This creates a vicious cycle where damaged mitochondria produce more free radicals, which in turn damage the mitochondria even more. Over time, this can lead to cell death, tissue damage, and contribute to aging and disease. So it goes without saying that we want to avoid all of that. So let's look at what exactly causes mitochondrial dysfunction to see if we can mitigate it. There are actually a lot of different factors that can mess with your cells, but here are some of the most common ones. 
First and foremost are nutrient deficiencies. Mitochondria rely on a bunch of different nutrients to function properly. For example, they need B vitamins like B1, B2, and B3, magnesium, coenzyme Q10, and various amino acids to carry out all the complex processes that lead up to the production of ATP. If you are deficient in any of these nutrients, your mitochondria can't function at full capacity. This is one of the reasons why a poor diet which lacks the essential vitamins and minerals can lead to fatigue and other symptoms related to mitochondrial dysfunction. Next, we have pollutants and toxic chemicals. As you know, we are all exposed to pollutants and chemicals in our environment. And unfortunately, some of these can damage our mitochondria. Things like pesticides, industrial chemicals, and even some medication can interfere with mitochondrial function. For example, certain types of antibiotics and also chemotherapy drugs are known to damage your cells, which then leads to side effects like extreme fatigue. Third are toxic metals. Of the environmental pollutants, toxic metals are particularly harmful. That's because metals like mercury, lead, cadmium, and arsenic can bind to important proteins and enzymes inside the mitochondria where they disrupt them and disrupt the production of ATP. Especially mercury can mess with the electron transport chain, which then prevents your mitochondria from generating enough energy. These toxic metals can accumulate in your body over time, especially if you're exposed to them through things like contaminated food, water, or air. This is something many people aren't aware of, and I know tons of people who still have mercury fillings in their teeth, for example. Another potential for mitochondrial disruption comes in the form of chronic infections, either bacterial, viral, or fungal. When your body is constantly fighting off an infection, it creates inflammation. This inflammation generates free radicals, which, as we discussed earlier, can damage your mitochondria. Certain infections like Lyme disease or Epstein-Barr virus are especially problematic and are related to causing mitochondrial dysfunction because they directly affect cellular energy production. Oftentimes, these infections lie dormant for several years and are really only dealt with and eliminated when you improve someone's health and fix their nutrient deficiencies. Then the body finally has the resources to bring up old infections and clear them out for good. This also explains why someone might have a flare-up or feel worse when you put them on a new health program. Great, this brings me to the topic of fixing mitochondrial dysfunction. If your mitochondria aren't working well, what can you do about it? To be honest, it is very similar to how you should deal with any type of energy problems, not just mitochondrial dysfunction. It's basically a four-step program that involves one, reducing stress to relax your body and nervous system, Two, improve your nutrition and fix nutrient deficiencies and imbalances. Three, actively detoxing pollutants and other chemicals. And four, reducing toxin exposure to avoid reaccumulation. I will link resources on all of these steps for you to check out if you're interested. In my experience, a lot of practitioners only focus on one of these four aspects, usually the nutrition part. So they will give you a list of vitamins and mineral supplements like B vitamins, magnesium, and then maybe also cofactors like CoQ10 and alpha-lipoic acid, all of which play important roles in mitochondrial function. Now, this approach can work for some people, but others are overwhelmed by it, and they don't tolerate these supplements. Oftentimes, if a person has had chronic fatigue or some other condition for a very long time, the body has really reduced its energy production to a minimum. If you just blast the system with nutrient cofactors for energy production, you overwhelm their bodies and make that person feel even worse. That's why you often need to calm down their body and nervous system before you do anything else. Then you can tackle the nutrients and also work at detoxing substances that interfere with mitochondrial function, like the heavy metals and other pollutants we talked about before. As always, the most important thing is to look at each person individually and see where they're at right now and what they need in that specific situation. Again, I like to do this in the four-step sequence that I just showed you, because it covers all aspects of energy production, not just problems with your cells, but also your hormones, neurotransmitters, and nervous system. Because to be honest, you might think you have mitochondrial dysfunction based on the symptoms, but the actual problem could be your high adrenaline levels 
or some sort of nutrient imbalance that has nothing to do with your cells. By looking at all of these aspects, you make sure that you don't miss anything while also improving your overall health. Otherwise, you run the risk of blindly supplementing certain nutrients that either don't work or lead to serious side effects.